Gonna come to Hi, it's Ben. I'm on. Thank you, and good morning. Will sergeants please start their recordings? The recording is on. Thank you. All recording started. Thank you. Backup is rolling. Thank you, and Sergeant Bradley. Okay. Good morning, and welcome to today's New York City Council vote on the committee. Sorry. All right, uh, on the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. Well, please, all council members, please turn on your videos. Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, this meeting is called to order. Good morning, my name is Diana Ayala and I am the Chair of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. I am joined today by my colleagues on the committee Council members Chen, Koslowitz, Ku, Jaeger, Menchaca, Brennan, Lander, and Kalo. Today, we will be voting on a historic piece of legislation, Introduction Bill Number 11162, sponsored by Council. <coughs> this legislation will finally expand the number of street vendor permits and establish a much needed independent street vendor enforcement unit. The city's street vendors are a vital part of New York's history. They not only enhance the vibrancy of public spaces and increase the sense of community, but they have always added to the diversity of the city's retail and food landscape. And they consistently contribute to the city's economy. Although data is hard to come by to assess the enormity of this classic New York industry, a 2012 study concluded that the direct effort, effect of street vendors was estimated to produce more than 16,000 jobs, 78.5 million in wages, and 82 million to the economy. Unfortunately, like many industries, street vending has been hit hard by COVID-19. The reduced foot traffic due to lockdown mandates, work from home orders and reduced uh, tourism means that street vendors have lost 80 to 90% of their usual sales over the course of the year. Unlike other small businesses and workers who are eligible to access government assistance and unemployment, the majority of the city's street vendors have not qualified for benefits under these programs. In spite of its, of its important contributions to the city, street vending in New York is historically contentious. As the most densely populated city in the country, public space in New York is a rare and valuable commodity. And there are competing demands on this precious resource pedestrians, delivery workers, sidewalk cafes, newsstands, grocery stands, fire hydrants, bus stops, and all of the other growing street furniture and traffic in our city are just some of the different elements vying for space on our sidewalk. Therefore, it is important that when recognizing the value of street vendors and doing what we can to ensure their sustainability, we also balance their needs against the host of other issues involved. This is why I am pleased that we are bringing intro 1116B to a vote today. The city's complex regulation of street vending has made enforcement inconsistent and contributed to the tension between street vendors and brick and mortar businesses. Changes to our enforcement of vending laws are necessary and the cap on permits to legally vend food in this city has caused the illegal market and um, permits to flourish. Intro 1116B, aims to stop pitting the city's small businesses against each other. It forces us to recognize that small vendors are, in fact, our smallest small businesses. By establishing both a comprehensive enforcement unit as well as a street vendor advisory board, the city will fairly balance the mix of competing interests, particularly when it comes to increasing the raft of regulation. The city street vendors deserve the recognition that they too are legitimate small business owners and operators. Only after the new enforcement unit has been in place for at least nine months will the bill release new permits, 400 each year for the next 10 years. Importantly, these new permits will prioritize current vendors that have been working on a cart and who have been on the wait list for a permit. They will also limit the number of folks who can vend in Manhattan as opposed to the outer borough. Called supervisory licenses, these new permits will require a licensee to be present at the car at all times. After the rollout of new permits, all permits will work in this way. The goal is that a permit holder, the vendor you know and you see regularly at your favorite mm -hmm. coffee, my favorite coffee lady, will not only be working that cart, but will have ownership of that cart. With the package of this bill, 
The committee is aiming to effectively address both the lack of opportunity for folks and provide affordable, good food options, but also bridge the gaps in enforcement and the proliferation of the illegal market that thrives because of decades old cap. As stated, street vending is an important enterprise for vendors, consumers, and the city's economic prosperity. But sidewalks need to, accommod uh, to accommodate a range of needs and enforcement needs to be functional. Intro 1116B will help mitigate these problems while balancing the competing needs of int and interests of all New Yorkers. I am happy that as chair of the Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, I can finally bring this much needed reform to a vote. With that, I encourage my colleagues to vote in the affirmative, but I will now pass it over to Council Member Chin, who is the, uh, the prime sponsor of the bill, for remarks. Thank you, Chair Ayala. You said it beautifully and explain it so well about the bill. I am just so excited that we finally got to this point after so many years. And the people who've been waiting are the hardworking vendors. Most of them are immigrant women. They just want to be able to start a small business, make a living, support their families. And we have to support them because as our chair said, they're part of our economy. They're part of New York City's history and our landscape. So it's about time. And the legislation will address a lot of the issue that people have been complaining about with the enforcement unit and a, vi a vendor advisory committee for it that will bring together all the agencies, uh, city agencies that are involved in the vending and the business community and the vendor community and they will be able to work together to you know, look at all the issues and make recommendation uh, to the city uh, to improve the system. So it's about time we pass this bill and I wanted to thank you know, all the advocates, the Street Vendor Project and all the uh, community organizations that have been so supportive and all the staff that has worked on this for so many years. And I really urge my colleague uh, to support uh, this bill because it is the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will now pass it over to the clerk for a uh, call to the vote. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote. <laughs> committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. Introduct proposed introduction 1116B. Chair I'm Ayala. I'm sorry, Bill, Billy, can you hold the vote for one second? Sure. Um, Council Member Yeager had his hand raised oh. and um, he would like to be recognized to speak. Sorry about that. Go ahead, thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Hi, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, my colleagues. I, I just want to speak briefly before we vote. Uh, obviously, uh, we, we know how the vote's going to turn out, but I, I would like to say the following on the record. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that the topic of vendor licenses has long begged to be visited by this council. Um, the first hearing on this bill was held uh, in April of 2019, more than a year and a half ago, and over a year before the beginning of the pandemic and the resulting economic turmoil. That economic turmoil has, to be sure, affected vendors, uh, as my colleagues have said, but I think it's also important to note how the economic turmoil has affected brick and mortar businesses. Countless re retail stores, eateries, uh, have permanently shuttered in our city to the point where I'm not even certain there's a present accurate count of how many have closed, uh, how many jobs have permanently disappeared, but we have all seen the shuttered storefronts in our neighborhoods. Uh, none of this is to say that the vendor license topic has been properly handled by the city. There's never been a real crackdown on absentee license holders who take effect of vendors, as my colleagues have noted uh, uh, publicly and throughout this process. Uh, there's never been a real crackdown on unlicensed vendors who set up shop right outside of the door of a tax paying establishment. These are real issues that need to be addressed. And in some ways, this bill will address that. In my view, the uh, enforcement aspect of the bill should take effect first to ensure that it is actually done. It's done fairly and it's done right. And I think that should happen before we legislate the issuance of new licenses. At the very least, I do believe this council should have held a new hearing to hear from the affected taxpayers before moving forward with this legislation. Um, so with that, I, I honor very much the incredible work, uh, the incredible amount of work, uh, truly incredible, that's been done by the sponsors, uh, by members of this body, by staff, uh, by the affected folks who, who have an interest in this bill in crafting this legislation and getting it to the right place. 
Um, but for these and, and many other reasons, I can't support today's bill. And I really do thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members have their hand up? No, we may proceed. Okay, we may proceed. Okay, once again, William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee Consumer Affairs, Introduction 1116B, <laughs> Chair Ayala. I fly. Chin. I vote aye. Thank you. Kalos. Aye. Ku. You muted Council Member Ku. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair Ayala, may I explain my vote? Yes, you may. Thank you. So uh, street vending has long been an issue in my community in Flushing. It got so bad that I had to pass a law to completely restrict vending in congested areas. Yeah, Over the last year, those areas have still been overrun by vending, but it has been literally ignored by every city agencies tasked with regulating them. The mayor's office, NYPD, consumer affairs, EOT, no one wants anything to do with street vending enforcement. We even had multi agencies weeks arranged after we got complaints but many agencies just didn't even bother showing up. It is obvious there is simply no appetite by the mayor to direct any city agency to enforce street vending. It doesn't matter that business people complain or that people get sick from eating the food or the smoke blows in windows or if there's litter on the streets. If there's no directive from the mayor, then nothing gets done. I'm sympathetic to street vendors. I think they deserve a place in our city, but they, but they need to be regulated and enforced just like everyone else. That hasn't happened in years. Because of this, I will be voting yesterday. The reason is that this is the only concerted effort to create a dedicated enforcement agency whose sole job is to enforce vending. I'm also pleased to see that the agency will be created first. The agency will be created first before lifting the cap and that you will be authorized to enforce unlicensed and licensed vending. It is time to stop passing the bug. Our regulatory agencies have spent too long standing around in a circle with everyone pointing their finger at someone else. The bill isn't perfect, but it is a good first step. And I truly hope you will put us on a path to work finally reaching some equilibrium among both street vendors and brick and mortar businesses. Finally, I want to use this opportunity to say that we need to be fair to our small businesses. I have a bill, intro 1145, that will exempt stores from item pricing requirements, provided they have scanners accessible to, to customers. During the pandemic, this will help reduce their already significant burdens. And I, I encourage my colleagues to sign support of that bill. But for today, I will vote yes on 1116B. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? <clears throat> For years, we worked on vendors. In the 90s, I worked on vendors so much that 
It was a horrible, horrible situation. This bill is the closest to a bill that's really going to help the individual person, give them something that they can count on, having their own cart, their own merchandise, and no black markets. I have to say, I've heard many times that vendors hurt restaurants. That is absolutely not true. You're not going to go, if you want to go to a restaurant, you are not going to stop off at a vendor. You're going to go to the restaurants. So I don't see how they can hurt restaurants. So Margaret, congratulations. This is a great step forward. And hopefully the people that have these carts have a good life and a prosperous life like other business people. So with that, I gladly vote aye. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you so much, Chair, and congratulations, uh, especially to Councilmember Chin and to you as well. This is um, uh, such a thoughtful conversation uh, and a good process. Obviously, a situation where we've got uh, various stakeholders that we care about all of, who see themselves pitted against each other is the most difficult time of all. Of course, New Yorkers love and wanna support street vendors and see in them all, so many of our immigrant stories of our families coming here to get a chance. We see how hard that work is. We know those folks can't apply for PPP, um, you know, and we want immigrants to have a chance to survive and thrive. Um, and of course, we also love our brick and mortar small businesses and we see what's happening during the pandemic and how hard it was before and we want them to survive and thrive. Um, and it's not easy to balance those interests. But um, and, and I'll say, I wish we had gotten there long ago if we had had the, the courage collectively to move through this process earlier, even though it was hard. In the last term, there was an effort. Earlier in this term, there was an effort. Margaret, you've been part of those and so many others on this call have. Street Vendor Project and organized street vendors have kept pushing us, but because it's difficult, we didn't get it done. And as a result, now we have to do it when it's even harder. Um, but the right answer, so I wish we had done it earlier and then we wouldn't be doing it in a pandemic um, when small businesses who are brick and mortar have also had such a hard time and of course, therefore, feel more put upon, not especially by street vendors, but by the pandemic. So I wish we had done it earlier, but this process is a good one. We should not continue to punish um, low-income immigrants who are street vendors because the pandemic has also made it harder for brick and mortar small businesses. So um, there'd be no perfect bill here, but this is a very good one. It really gets this, this issue right, balancing all the interest. Props to everybody who worked on it, to the speaker and his team, to council member Chin and her team, to Street Vendor Project and their allies, and to the chambers and the small business folks who show up to advocate for the folks they care about, even if at the end of the day, they don't support the bill. It does bear saying that we have not done enough for our small businesses. And of course we have much more to do. So let's consider council members coup bill about item pricing. I've got a bill coming about mandatory PPE provision. In Albany, they've got uh, rent relief bills and small business uh, recovery lease bills. And at back at this council, we can consider commercial rent stabilization. There are so many more ways that we need to show up for our small businesses. And I feel deeply committed to do so. But for today, I celebrate this good step forward for our street vendors who work so hard and deserve an opportunity, should not be shunted into the black market um, and should have a real opportunity to survive and thrive. Just one last small thing. I do think it's also worth noting that the open restaurant and open retail programs that we've passed during this pandemic uh, and are fighting hard to make sure remain permanent do create an opportunity for brick and mortar small businesses who want to, to apply for free to get to use the sidewalk and street space in front of their businesses. That is not a cure-all and many other things in this bill are, are critical to make sure that there's good uh, enforcement and protocols. But I do just wanna note that there is that opportunity for brick and mortar small businesses to use the spaces in front of their stores in the pandemic. And let's keep that going past the pandemic so that they have the opportunity as well. Thank you so much and I proudly vote aye. 
Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you to Speaker Johnson and his team, uh, Councilmember Chin, and our new chair of the committee. Welcome, uh, Councilmember and Chair Ayala. Uh, the incredible work that we have been doing with the vendor project has been long term. And the small businesses that we have spoken to, the union representatives that we have spoken to, all the advocates on all the sides have shared their concerns. And those who have worked with us um, helped us all get to this historic point. And I'm proud to be a prime a co-prime sponsor for this bill, uh, a bill that is, uh, like Councilmember Lander said, long overdue. Uh, it has been almost half a century since the council has taking, taken any positive action on the city's current street vendor permit and enforcement system. And throughout that time, we have seen a rampant underground market grow, exploitation of our immigrant workers grow, and an over-policing and discrimination of vendors, and, and an outdated regulations that have created disorderly and frustration in our commercial corridors. And that's what we're getting in response to this bill. Chambers of Commerce are saying what they're saying, and there's a lot of beliefs, um, but those are all myths. What we know is that street vendors actually create a more positive uh, impact to our commercial corridors. And with this intro, 1116B, we have the opportunity to modernize sorely outdated regulations that will serve both street vendors and brick and mortar businesses. Our bill creates the Office of Street Vendor Enforcement, a new dedicated unit within the city government to justly and firmly enforce the new laws. Once this enforcement unit is up and running for nine months, the permit cap will slowly be rolled back and 400 new, brand new food vending permits will be issued annually for the next 10 years. Most importantly, this intro establishes a street vendor advisory board that includes representatives from the vendor community, small businesses in our community, and the city agencies. And unlike the current outdated system, the new legislation will ensure that stakeholders have a voice to address issues as they arise. And we know that they will arise. So whether it's on Fifth Avenue, uh, hot dog stand or Chinatown fruit cart or in Sunset Park, a taco truck, street vendors are deeply embedded in the vibrant culture of our city. It's in the fabric of the city, both in the past, present and in our future. Our street vendors were on the front lines of the pandemic feeding our city. They are small business owners, many of them who were left out of state and federal emergency aid. Street vendors also tell a beautiful American story of those who started out on the streets vending and then owning their own brick and mortar storefront or restaurant. Intro 116B does not pit street vendors against other small businesses. Our bill is the beginning of an ongoing effort to support all and small businesses uh, so that they can recover from this devastating economic impact brought about by COVID-19 pandemic. And with that, I vote aye uh, so proudly. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone on this committee for doing the good work uh, for Margaret Chin and her team and for the incredible street vendor power that they have built. Uh, let's keep going. Thank you. I vote aye. Brennan. I have permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Chair. Um, so as the husband of a small business owner uh, who had to close her business after 10 years because of COVID, uh, I do feel particularly uh, tuned into what our local small businesses are going through right now. Um, I also think that there's a lot of misinformation out there about this bill. Um, right now, it's basically the wild west out there for our food carts. Um, for instance, um, as far as enforcement is concerned, anytime I've had an issue with an illegal vendor just popping up, I've had to call in favors to the NYPD or city hall to actually get action taken. And mainly because there's such a mess of rules and regulations that no one really knows, no one agency knows the rules. Um, having a dedicated enforcement unit where you have specially trained agents who can enforce all general food and vending rules is what we've needed for a very long time. 
um, and making sure that this new unit is up and running before we uh, uh, let, you know, um, release any new permits just makes a lot of sense. So I appreciate that. Uh, making sure that this unit is, is um, up and running for almost a year before we consider releasing new permits is important too. Um, ha the, the issue of this, this idea of these bender tycoons who live down in Florida and are renting out 10 different trucks uh, up in Brooklyn is insane. It's absolutely crazy and it's gotta end. And we need to get to a place where um, the, if you have the permit, you have to be present with the cart. Uh, you can't be leasing it out and paying your workers garbage while you're out of the state um, and, and leasing out your, your cart. So I hope we'll get to a place where all permit holders have to be present at the cart. I think that's really uh, important and I think something that we need to fight towards. Um, but I, I, I think this bill is great. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about this bill. I understand the sensitivity around the timing of this bill, especially considering that the, the earliest we would see any change would be the summer of 2022. Um, but I appreciate the thrust of the bill. And especially for me and my experience is um, the enforcement of, of vendors that just pop up, not just for resident complaints, but frankly, for other vendors who are following the rules. Um, and then when other vendors aren't following the rules and there's no one to really enforce them. So we have to level that playing field uh, for the folks that are following the rules and doing the right thing. So uh, with all of that, I, uh, I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Yeager. I vote no, thank you. I voted eight in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions. Proposed introduction 1116B has been adopted by the committee. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all for coming in again. Congratulations, Margaret. Um, you're a champion, my hero. Uh, the, with that, we conclude this hearing. Thank you guys, see you later. Thank you, Chair. Congratulations, Margaret. Thank you.